Hello, Medfield. Thanks for watching Medfield TV. And once again, we have Mike Sullivan visiting us. He's going to tell us what's going on at Town Hall, what's going on in the town, what's going on with school population, what's going on and everything that's going on. So uh, let's see what Mike has to say today. And he's also going to talk about the fin financial issues, how, what's happening at town meeting as far as the budget items, what's going to happen with, to our pocketbook. So Mike, what's going on? It's cold. It's, it's, I didn't know that, Mike. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But at least you don't have to shovel coal. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, um, we, we did survive the first two storms on a new, not so new anymore, public works director and the crew did a great job. So the budget's still tough. full, still enough? The budget is not broke yet. The, okay. the uh, storms, and we're lucky, both storms occurred on weekends. So uh, it was better for people commuting to work, that have to commute to work. So. Mm -hmm. Um, although the uh, Christmas Day storm is not so good because it's double time for holidays, so. But when I heard about Erie, Pennsylvania, oh, my God. That's sort of like we, the position we were in three years ago. But five so. feet of snow in a day and a half, I thought, holy mackerel. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so they're on, on their way. Would we have 110 inches that winter? So I think they're up to about 68 inches. And that was just in a day or two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but. Um, and then there's California. Look at all the problems there. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'd rather have the snow any day. Yeah, well I, I can't imagine those fires. I really cannot imagine it in Medfield. Uh, you know, I just uh, can't. You know, when they say it, it's hot but it's dry, well, that's the reason they have all the fires. Everything's so dry, so mm -hmm. we are lucky. Um, but speaking of fires, the uh, uh, ALS committee has been meeting. Um, speaking of fires. <laughs> Well, fire department oh, okay. the <laughs> is under the fire department, so it reminded me of that. So, okay. uh, and they came in and met with the selectmen at their last meeting and talked about what their current thinking is. And uh, they seem to be leaning towards um, putting two additional firefighter ALS uh, employees on, and they already have two ALS certified employees and uh, any new firefighter hired in the future will have to be ALS certified. So okay. eventually that would give us, I, I think the, the, to me the plan sounded like what they want to do is have 12 uh, firefighters, which would be an increase from eight to 12. Just so doing it gradually though. Do it gradually, uh, start out with two and then uh, along the line add two more. What, what would be the um, different, difference in pay? It would be the same, although, you know, with collective bargaining agreements, you cover, because they, th eventually they would all be ALS. So um, um, the, uh, that would give you three people per shift. And the theory is that you would uh, try to get a waiver from the state so that the driver of the ambulance didn't have to be oh, okay. ALS certified. Makes sense. So you would have an uh, EMS certified person driving mm -hmm. the ambulance and, uh, and then you'd have an ALS certified person in the back taking care of the See, when I was AMT, we, we took turns. And if it was a really yeah. rough road or something, we had to go fast, I'd always ask my partner to drive because yeah. I'm not yeah. good at high speeds. But I can well, see that makes a lot of sense though, having the regular EMT on the driving. Yes, yeah. Uh, now the question is, will the state approve that? Yeah. I know this was the only district in the state that wouldn't grant waivers to have only one uh, ALS, or uh, one EMT, I guess, when we were talking about EMTs. So what I, whether that's changed or not, I don't know. But, um, and they haven't finalized that. There's still some discussion among the committee, as I understand they've been meeting until 10.30, 11 o'clock. It's a big issue, night. though. It is a big issue. It has far-reaching long-term implications. So, um, I often, I was talking to our temporary fire chief, our acting fire chief, uh, who's doing a terrific job, by the way. He's really a good guy. Everybody seems to like him. He speaks very well at meetings. I've watched him on television. Yes, he does, yeah. And uh, he's very impressed with Medfield, by the way. He oh. said he, uh, 
the department heads uh, get along and the employees are hardworking and he, was, he's very, he speaks very highly of it. Um, but um, the, uh, uh, the I, I think that is, he, you know, he brought something to the table of perspective from outside the department that uh, wasn't necessarily there. There, there are some people that, I, well, I was talking to him and I said, you know, it seems to me with all the traffic congestion, you just look at 109 during rush hours. Oh, it's horrible. That at some point, we won't be bringing the ALS ambulance to the scene. You'll be bringing the ALS uh, attendants or whatever you call them uh, um, um, to, to the scene. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it will be by, you know, a helicopter or uh, a <laughs> drone or, yeah. or, or something, you know. Uh, a jet pack like yeah. the Jetsons. Sure. No, uh, still. Because uh, you have to have some way to, to beat the traffic. I mean, if, if uh, ALS is great, but if it takes them 15 minutes to get out 109 and mm -hmm. traffic, uh, uh, is there a real advantage? Yeah, that's so. Uh, so, uh, but, but that's off in the future. That was just a. Uh, the helicopter is an interesting alternative because I remember using it a few times in very serious conditions when I was an EMT. Yeah. Uh, life-saving conditions, and of course yeah. they got so much respect. And, and if you had a system like that, it, m it might be easier to re uh, regionalize. Mm -hmm. That's because, what I'm thinking. Because if you're talking about, uh, you know, one of the problems with regionalization has been, well, you know, Medway says, well, if the uh, ambulance is based in Medfield, it will never get to Medway mm -hmm. in time. and and. We're the same if, you know, the ambulance were based in Medway. That's a valid we'll point, sure. to us in time. But if you had some way of bypassing the traffic, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there these days with all the self-driven cars and, uh, you know, much smaller planes and... You'd still have to find a way to get the sick person to the helicopter landing site, however. Well, once you get, yes, that's true. But you might be able to land in much tighter spaces than you do now. Because I remember when we chose yeah. the landing spots here in Medfield, yeah. uh, we had very yeah. big spots. Or you could have a police cruiser at the site where they that's landed. True that, that, uh, that's true, too. That's true. That is true. So, uh, but yeah. you know, the whole idea would be to speed up the, mm -hmm. the time it takes to get the person under treatment. So, um, but will that, will that be a discussion at town meeting? I don't think that. Okay, be won't a be ready. Okay. That was just something okay. we were s speculating on as as how it might be handled in the future. Okay. Um, and that was just my crazy idea, <laughs> so, watching too many Jetsons, I guess. <laughs> so, um, but so that will be uh, an issue coming up at town meeting. As I said, they're still uh, discussing it and haven't come up with a final recommendation. Mm -hmm. But uh, they should be ready for town meeting on that. Um, the. Uh, Fire chief interviews have not begun yet. They should begin shortly. They've hired a firm to do what they call a assessment center, which is what they did when they hired uh, Bob Beeney as police chief. Uh, how, ma how many um, applications did they have? You know, I don't really know. I don't know whether that, uh, I think the deadline has passed for that, so okay. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but. Uh, you know, that'll be an interesting process. It was very interesting when we went through it uh, with the police chief. So, um, I think you were on that. Mm -hmm. you were on that I was. Yeah, so. And we did a very good job. Bob well, Meany is a terrific yeah. chief, and uh, he certainly has had his work cut out for him the last few weeks. As, as you know, we've had a, that fatal accident, and yeah. the same day we had another I was impressed. accident. At I was impressed to hear how well he inter just described it, the situation on television. Very yeah. impressed. I was, I was very impressed too, in addition to uh, how quickly and how well they got to the victims of, of the accident, yeah. but at how well they handled the potential catastrophic traffic sure. situation. They kept the traffic moving, detouring down Nebo and Foundry and Phillip and 
And then they had the accident at Weston North Meadows yeah. Road, so they had to detour that traffic at the same time. And you take your two major east-west commuter roads shut down at the same time. That's really um, a nightmare scenario. Absolutely. They handle it very well. Um, and uh, you know, particularly when you consider we have so many new young policemen. Yeah. And we probably have five or six in the last couple of years new policemen on the force. And, um, whatever training they're getting, they're doing well by them because they seem to be able to handle themselves mm. very well. What's the total, total number in the police force today? I believe it's... Uh, it's 14 it, or 17? It, no, I think it's either 18 or 19. Oh, plus, it's more than 17 is what uh, I was thinking. But plus five or six dispatchers. Okay. Uh, and the chief, so it's, uh, it hasn't grown a tremendous amount, and I don't think the chief expects that it will grow much more, so uh, unless we become crime city, which <laughs> hopefully we won't. Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing, one of the other things, and it was a long meeting. The selectmen's meeting went till eleven thirty at last Tuesday. So, and I had a meeting at seven a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> seven a.m. and I got in my car and it was twenty of twelve. I said, "Oh, it's a long day." Yeah. But. Um, they uh, uh, met with the, the uh, chairman of the uh, hospital reuse committee, Steve Nolan, and they had a long discussion about that. And it appears that the J January town meeting is now the, now talking about May for a town meeting uh, because of the difficulty of the zoning issues. And they're talking about some very complicated zoning issues. One of them is whether to zone abortion the hospital as a uh, 40R district, which yep. allows for eight units per acre by right. Um, I express some concerns about it with my usual distrust of state government. Yeah, because we talked but about 40, 40 R years ago. Yes, 20, 30 yes. years ago, we talked about 40 R up there, maybe with right. the old reuse committee. Yeah, and but and I remember discussing it and, and we decided not to go that route. Right, yeah. Well, there's, there's supposedly some benefits that will be. Uh, uh, the state gives you money if you have a 40-yard district, but as we've learned over the years, what the state giveth, the state can take it away, <laughs> and, um, and they do. Yeah. You know, I remember when they told us not to worry about 766. It's all going to be paid for 100% by well. the state and federal government. It won't cost the towns a cent. Um. Or was that ever a fraud <laughs> perpetrated on the local taxpayer? Um, not that we had any control over it. It was... Uh, uh, a fait accompli, so, mm. but it's, uh, they've been cost shifting over the years and, and as they cost shift, they mandate more and more services be provided. And, um, that's another factor that's going to influence the state hospital future to the tax bill that was signed into law uh, last week. What's that going to do for us? What impact will it have on the hospital? Uh, was going to, uh, there was some they didn't do away with the uh, uh, historic building tax credit, but they modified it. So it will take uh, quite a bit longer to realize the benefits of the savings that you would get by taking the historic tax credit. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure um, how it works, but I know it's it's less generous than it was. Okay. So. Uh, so that's another factor they have to figure in. And then uh, there's the whole issue of, uh, of putting uh, senior housing uh, on lot three at the uh, Ice House Road and on the, what they call the Hinkley property. Mm -hmm. um, and that wouldn't be 40B as proposed by the Senior Housing Committee. Of course, you are familiar with that because you're a member of that committee. Yeah. Um, but that would be... Uh, the idea behind it um, is that it would be uh, the uh, land would be sold or donated at a reduced price to reduce the cost of the housing units, and they'd be sold this to uh, seniors with preference given to Metro residents. Um, and there's some concerns with that. You know, you don't want somebody to be able to buy a house at a reduced cost and then sell it for two years and make a huge profit and 
and then the house becomes no longer affordable. So it would have to be uh, a lot of thought given to that. Sure. But, uh, and uh, the uh, there were four, four or five articles regarding senior housing submitted for by petition uh, for the town meeting warrant, uh, and then one from the senior housing study committee. Um, so it'll be four petitions and one from the committee. Um, so that'll be, a, I assume, a big topic. Uh, Park and Rec put an article in to uh, hire a uh, project manager and a uh, architect to do a preliminary study for the uh, uh, a new Park and Rec building up at the State Hospital. Oh. So. I don't know where that will go. Still in the sledding, sledding hill area? The, the what? The sledding hill area? That's where they'd like to oh. put it, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the uh, uh, Council on Aging put sort of a placeholder article in to fund an addition um, to the senior, uh, for the, to the center at Medfield mm -hmm. down on Ice House Road. And I don't know where that will go. Uh, the, the big change since last month is the school department was, well, the school committee was notified by the Mass School Building Authority that they are approving the, uh, uh, well, they put Medfield, the Dale Street School Project, on their list of projects that they are likely to fund. Mm. Now, it's, they tell me it's a, uh, a uh, three to five year process to actually, um, you know, start getting it in the ground. The first step is a feasibility study. Uh, and I said, well, if they've approved it, don't they already think it's feasible? Yeah. So, but that's 750000 to a million dollars. Oh my God. And they said, well, you have to do soils tests and locations and programs and, you know, uh, and they say that takes 18 to 24 months for that. And then if uh, they like the results of that, then they can fund the project. And our funding rate right now is 39.84%. Mm. I said, couldn't they at least round it to 40%? But um, that means that we would pay 60.16% and uh, of the cost and the state would pay 39.84. Um, so, uh, and they do it differently now. They actually, you don't borrow the entire amount, you only borrow the town share and then you submit the bills to the state and they pay okay. their share and we pay our share. And who would pay then to, to do whatever it is gonna be with the existing Dale Street School building? That would be up to the town. It'd be up to so us to take care of that. It, That's know, not a cheap project. It's not a cheap project. There are some people who suggested that might be a better site for a park and rec building because it's near the center of town. Uh, more kids could walk to it or bike to it. Mm -hmm. and it's near the swim pond so, and it has a, a gymnasium in the school. Yep. So, but um, who knows, you know, that's, uh, if, if it's done at all, that would be several years away. Uh, Park and Rec still uh, prefers to put a new facility up at the State Hospital or the Sledding Hill site. So, so lots of uh, lots lot, of things happening. It's lots of money. Yes, yes, and uh, and speaking of money, the budgets are coming in. We've had some. Um, not so good surprise. Well, I can't say the surprises. I think we anticipated in the Norfolk County retirement pension assessments up 10 percent. Oh my God! Um, and they well, they told us they expect that for the next five years. Wow! Uh, because the you know they want to get to full funding of the system, and they were doing pretty well, and then the recession came along, and the st when the stock market crashed, and I think it lost a lot in value. So they're trying to make up for it now. So what's the dollar amount that the town would have to make up? Uh, $18 million right now. So, um, and uh, wow. that's, uh, 
and that grows every year. You know, a, f a few years ago it was 14 million. So, um, unless the stock market keeps going up the way it has been, maybe then I'll, uh, that'll reduce it somewhere down the line. But um, I suspect the stock market will be like Bitcoin. So as they say, Bitcoin's dropped 25 percent in value last week. So uh, the stock market's been going up so long. It's the old saying, what goes up must come down. That so, always does. Um, it seems like it's well overdue for a correction, but I don't own stock, so I guess it doesn't matter to me immediately. I probably own them through my pension system, but not directly. So, um, But um, we are uh, doing pretty well, pretty well compared to our uh, other cities and towns in the state funding our uh, other post-employment benefits. That's mainly for health and life insurance for mm -hmm. retirees. Our liability for that went from 48 million to 41 million. So we're making progress. Yeah. We actually set up a trust fund a couple of years ago. We've been putting 400,000 yeah. a year. and That's done very well. We invested it through the state uh, retirement system investment fund. It's called PRID, I believe. And um, earned about 12.7 percent the first year. <laughs> Pretty good. Yes, of course. You know that's a year when the stock market was flying. Uh, there'll be years when you probably lose 12 percent. Yeah. So you have to average it out over the long term. Um, but uh, we're at that rate. We're probably about uh, f four percent funded. Um, which sounds doesn't sound great, but they had a Boston Business Journal had an article about the uh, tidal wave of debt that's coming over cities and towns. Oh, I know, and federal. Oh my God! And um, it was mainly the pension and o OPEB liabilities, and they had uh, the lo most of the largest cities in the state, and virtually none of them have put anything away. Uh, you know, uh, Cambridge, I think, was 1%. Boston was zero. Worcester was zero. Springfield was zero. Far River was zero. Lowell, I believe, was and zero. And the, the federal debt now is how many trillion? They don't know. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, for all they tell us how crooked everybody is, the federal government isn't required to audit its books. And they have slops being f thrown around that city uh, like nobody's business, and they don't have to do an audit. And God knows what that audit would show. There probably wouldn't is enough paper to print the money to cover the debt that the federal government has. And it's yeah. a shame because I say that Congress and the, and the uh, administration must hate grandchildren because why else would they be passing all this debt on to that, future generations? That's what scares me. Yeah, and you never hear them, <coughs> never hear them talk about how the bills are going to be paid. All they talk about is, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do that. They never talk about how they're going to pay for it. And I understand they're running up a tab of $3 billion a day, a day. Think of what that's Federal going to government? do in the future. Federal government? If you ask them, they probably wouldn't even know. Jeez. And I and I read an article today on one of these online magazines they sent to everybody, uh, local officials, and <laughs> it had the financial conditions of the uh, 50 states in order, and Florida was number one. I guess where Massachusetts was in terms of their the ability to meet their bills right. and cover future costs. Massachusetts was 48. <laughs> the only two states lower than Massachusetts were New Jersey and, and New Illinois. Oh, and Illinois, okay. Which are both on the verge of bankruptcy. And I'm saying everybody thinks Massachusetts, oh, we're doing great, we're very solid financial. We're 48th out of the 50 states in terms Jeepers. of our ability to meet our future payments. Wow. That's pathetic. Uh, and nobody talks about it. You know, why isn't, why aren't the Boston Papers or all the, has somebody, reporting about all these liabilities and debt that are piling up. Um, if you listen to the, the, the 
state government, whether it's the legislature or the administration, we're doing fine. And the federal government saying, we can do it. Yeah, well, why are we 48th out of 50 states? Uh, and, uh, and it's because we're acting like the federal government. Oh, you can have this, you can have that, we're gonna give you this Just benefit, to the you deserve it, you know. But they don't want to pay the bills. They but don't un unlike, taxes. unlike you, I do have children, and I have grandchildren, and I have two great grandchildren. Yes. And yes. I think of what's going to happen to not just my kids, but the other generations beyond. It's it's really scary. It it bothers me, and I don't have kids, so. Uh, uh, but I I think, uh, you know, if we don't mend our ways, we'll be living in a third world country. Yeah. Uh, we'll have so much debt piled up that we owe other countries and you know It's great when everybody will loan you money, but as soon as the well dries up and they say huh, we're not loaning you yeah. money um, well, How's that, the school budget going to collapse? How's the school budget this year? Um, up up, up. <laughs> How <Yeah>. much? <laughs> uh, the preliminary figure which is kind of on the high side. I think it comes in uh, at uh, uh, You know when all the principals and teachers and everybody submits their proposed wish list. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's the initial budget and, and somebody said it's up about 6%, mm -hmm. which is unsustainable. I mean, that would require a huge override. So it has to come down, especially when you've got to have an override to pay for this million I dollar feasibility study. Yeah, for you the know, parking we mechanism. You can't just yeah. pull a million bucks out of a hat. That's wow. going to require an override. So, and then you've got your pension going up 10%. That's really scary. And then you've got our health insurance. Uh, we've been told the minimum increase in health insurance will be about 5.5%. Now, we've had very good experience, so we'll <laughs> be much closer to that. I've budgeted for 6% increase, hoping that will be enough. But um, you combine even a 6% increase combined with a 10% increase in the pensions, and you know, gee, under proposition two and a half, we have two and a half percent increase plus new growth, which may bring it closer to three. But you know, we're not getting that much new growth. Don't you have any good um, news out of town hall? Um, probably <laughs> I do. Yes. It must be some good let, news. Let me think about that. Is Evelyn coming back to, to work? Evelyn was in today. Oh, so that's good news. So yes, that's very good news. So uh, we've had a series of. Uh, surgeries in town hall. We had one employee had a knee replacement, two employees had knee replacement No, I've surgery. done that myself. <laughs> um, Evelyn had surgery, uh, mm. and there was uh, somebody else that's going in for surgery, I think. They said, my God, all of a sudden it's, uh, hospitals are doing a landmine <laughs> business. So. And it's not cheap. <laughs> no, it isn't cheap, my God. Um, I was going through some old papers cleaning out uh, uh, stuff, and I found the uh, bill from when I was born. How much did it cost? Uh, eight eight days in the hospital, which I guess was normal. Now my mother was a nurse, so she got a nurse's discount <laughs> in the hospital. But uh, the room rate, uh, including use of the operating room, did cover the doctor's fee. The, the room in the operating how much? Use of the operating room was I think eighty six dollars. <laughs> So this, of course, was in 1902, right? <laughs> not quite. 1946. Uh, I was the first of the baby boomers. So. Yeah. Um, but it shows you what what's happening. Uh, you know, I was talking to someone the other day uh, about the health insurance rates, and they wanted a, a history. It was a, a teacher that was putting doing some work for the Teachers Association on examining health insurance rates, so I was able to go back to 1999. And he said, boy, look at how much they have gone up. They were like $200 back then uh, uh, a month, and now it's $800 a Gee. month. They said, well, look what's happened to the price of a car, the price of a house, yes, too. the price of a cheeseburger. You know, you college tuitions. College tuition, uh, the teacher salaries, you yeah. know, salaries of public employees, it's, they've all gone up. Mm -hmm. So why would you expect them not to have gone up, especially when every year the legislature says, oh, well, we're going to give you this benefit, we're going to give you that benefit, we're going to yeah. give you that benefit, yeah. and you can't raise the rates, you've got to give it for free. Yeah. Well, that cost just gets passed on, you know, it's going to, 
uh, somebody's got to pay for it. What can a small town do about this, though? What can we do? Uh, 12,000 I'll, people. I'll move to Canada or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I want to stay here. I, I just, I do too. So, but, uh, you know, you've got people that think money grows on trees, and the federal government has convinced them that it does, and frankly, the press does a lousy job. You think they'd be investigating some of these, and what do they do? They talk about who harassed who 30 years ago? Well, you know, I know that's a significant issue to a lot of people, but what about who's gonna pay the bills? How much debt are we incurred? You know, what can we afford these services? I understand 45% of the state budget now is for health insurance. Jeepers. That's unsustainable. And it's going up every year because we keep adding more and more people who pay nothing for health insurance. And, and what's really is that people that say teachers that, that teach only 20 years and leave, they keep their health insurance and then somebody else takes their job and they get the health insurance for another yes. 20 years. And yes. that's what they, doubling or, up is a really prob real or, problem. Or somebody that moves to Massachusetts in their 40s or 50s and gets on uh, mass health yeah, and pays too. nothing. That's true too. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, so everybody else's health insurance goes up and they say, why is my health insurance rate going up? Well, you're paying for all these people that yeah. are paying nothing or paying very reduced rates. It's, uh, you know, the public has to smarten up and put people in office that care about how they pay the bills. The big concern is what can we give you? And, you know, uh, as, as uh, they've learned over the years, whether it's Italy after World War I or Greece a few years ago or uh, Germany after World War II, you know, you just cannot go on forever not paying the bills. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing. Oh. Um, it's, it's sad, but, but nobody wants to address it. Yeah, I grew up, uh, we were f fairly comfortable financially. My father was a dentist, so it wasn't that we were hard for money, hard up. But they all, my parents always had a rule, never overli overlive your income. Yes. So always yeah. underlive it. And that's exactly what I grew up with. Well, what's the old line, the definition of a rich person is somebody that, that spends less than they make? That's a good idea. I like and, that. And by that definition, a lot of people that you think are rich are not rich yeah. because they're spending it faster than it's coming in. So. Well, wow. But My parents had good advice, though. I wish the, the states and the federal government followed that same rule. But they don't as long as they can get away with it yeah. and pass it on to, the, you know, somebody said, well, what's going to happen? I said, well, the, by the time the bills come due, they'll be out of office. So mm -hmm. it'll be the next guy that, that gets stuck with it. And, They'll try to figure out some way they can get it, pass it on to the next guy. But eventually it's gonna catch up. Sure it will. So. That's oh, a happy, I, happy talk. <laughs> I sound like Cassandra, you know, or, or pushing the sheep over the, over, over the edge of the cliff <laughs> That's or right. something. So, uh, but, um, mm. I th so the, the, there must be some good news, I guess. Well, well actually, there'll, be an election we had, there'll be an election coming in not too long. An election coming in February, and we did have, uh, I, w I will say, the uh, uh, holiday s stroll was a very big success. Very yeah, I have nice a event. bracelet yes. from that. Oh, did it? Yeah, yep. Is yep. that handmade or? It, uh, yes, it was uh, at the library, that the, the, the uh, person that oh, made okay. it. In the library, I think it's beautiful. Right now, yeah, that is. It's like uh, one of those uh, what tennis bracelets. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the other one is a plain tennis bracelet, but this is one uh, from the store. When it, that store was a wonderful time. Um, yes. It really was. Yeah. I hope pe was. more people go next year. Yes, and they luck they lucked out on the weather. The mm -hmm. weather was perfect for. If it were this year, week, it would be a very different <laughs> different yes, matter with uh, this ice everywhere. That's like they were talking about first night, and I said, I think the attendance will probably be down somewhat because who's going to want to go into those events that stand out? Yep. yep. Zero degree weather with a wind chill factor of minus 15, so, um, and a potential snowstorm. So We haven't had so. any bad accidents this last year, have we? Now that 2017 is drawing well, to a close? Yes, we had that fatality. We ha oh, that's right, at the 10109, not too long ago. Yeah. And uh, there have been some other. Uh, that same day, there was another same, bad same area, accident yep. with no fatality, but some. So that's the only one you can think of. Injury. 
Oh, I'm sure there have been others. Sure. You know, no, I meant uh, fatalities. Uh, that, no, that was the only fatality that I'm I know aware it was. Of. Yeah, yeah. I'm well aware of that one on yeah. Main Street. Um, but it's, uh, uh, and that was a shame. You know, it, it, it was ironic. You know, we were talking about who should pay to repair 109. Um, if you look at both of those accidents, I don't think there was a single person from Medfield involved in either of the accidents. That's an interesting thing. So it thought. tells you that those uh, roads are used by f far more than Medfield residents. So it's, we should have a tolls. We should have a toll. <laughs> There's only one problem with that. Then Westwood would have a toll for us, and Dedham would have a toll for Westwood and us. And <laughs> you'd go rope paying tolls. So, uh, uh, There's no good answer uh, to it, though. But No, no. Um, I did. I remember a few years ago there was a guy that came in and told the selectman that there was too much building going on in the adjacent towns, and why didn't we just go and talk to their selectman and get them to stop allowing building in their towns? <laughs> so a lot of people would agree with you. They would, but it ain't that easy. Yeah. You know, if if, uh, uh, if wishing were were getting, it might be different. But you can wish all you want. Mm. Uh, I was told this morning that uh, Sudbury, you know, everybody complains about Medfield and 40B project. Yet Sudbury has a proposal for a large 40B right in the historic center of the town. Wow. And the state, and the courts uh, overruled Sudbury. Sudbury denied it and the courts overruled it. Made, making Sudbury pay $75,000 in legal fees to the developer and approve the project. <laughs> so if you think we've got it bad, um, wait till you see what's going going on in the other towns. Yeah. I went over to for uh, Christmas uh, to Norfolk, and I said, "What's new in Norfolk?" And they said, "All people talk about are the 40 Bs. You know, that's one for I think 250 units, another for 150 units over there, and everybody thought that they were not going to have to get them, and." Uh, they're finding out uh, that developers find ways to get around them and build them anyway. Of course so, they do. Yeah. And of course now the state government is all pushing because Boston wants more building, wants more skyscrapers and million dollar condos, so they want yeah. to put more housing out in the suburbs. So. I remember Scott Caldwell at one town meeting. Scott's a local builder, as you're well aware. But uh, there was a talk about uh, putting a new uh, area of construction up and they have to extend the sewer. And uh, the, the speakers that were against it said, oh, if we send a sewer, then everybody's going to come and build there. It's going to be even worse than it is. And Scott Colwell, bless his heart, stood up. And he's the honest as the day is long. He said, let me tell you, I'm a developer. And if I want to, uh, developers want to build something, they will find a way to do it. Yes. And he was right on. He is, yes, yeah. He's right on. Um, there is one bit, I don't know if I mentioned this the last time we met, but the uh, proposal for the daycare center that yeah. we built down on I've watched that on the meeting. Yeah, that has uh, been dropped, and I understand they are purchasing a piece of land up off 27 right next to the storage warehouse. Uh, next to where? It's, it's between uh, the uh, garden uh, continuum and the that moving storage warehouse. Oh, up know, in there. Where you rent the bins, yes. That, there was a lot of tr scrub trees growing up there. Mm -hmm. It's right along 27. And they cut all the trees down a couple of years ago. Well, I understand. They're going to put it there. So. Oh, and they already have starting getting the permit process? Well, they've, they're just in the process of purchasing oh, the okay. land, I understand. So, so uh, the, uh, I think by and large the town's been very lucky and uh, controlling the types of development we have. We don't always win, but uh, when we lose, we don't seem to lose as bad as, as uh, we thought we might. And certainly when you see what's going on around us in other communities. Uh, I ha No, I haven't been over, I usually go 109, I usually don't go West Street and Dover Road, but I understand they've done a big land clearing over there for yep. assisted living yes, facility. It is. It's going to be a good size one, too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what's happening with Glen Ellen. Uh, I'm not uh, sure either. 
Yeah, they, they uh, I think they're supposed to put, I don't know, 300 units or more over at Glen Ellen, uh, supposedly 55 and older. Mm. Although I don't know if people understand what 55 and older housing means. It means that one person has to be over 55 years old. So you can have 10 people move into right. a 55 and older and house. All as long a lot as of toddlers and everything else, yep. As, as long as one of them is over 55, That's it. it's, they've met the qualifications. So uh, People think everybody that moves in has to be over 55. That's not the case. And that state law or federal law, I don't yeah. know, or court rulings, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm um, aware of it because I live in an over 55 project. Yeah. yeah <coughs> but almost all of us are my age. Yeah, but there have been children in uh, there. Uh, you know, there so, are, there, yeah. Yes, there are some. So. But um, I understand the they fixed the sidewalk down by there too, by the railroad tracks at Dale Street. People on Dale Street and my own, my own street, but all up and down Dale are thrilled. They cannot believe what a great job they did. They were very, very proud of the um, town well, I know for the doing it. I know uh, Mo Boulay, the public works director, worked hard to, to, with the, uh, it was a Mass Coastal Railroad to yeah. uh, uh, jointly uh, do the work. Highway guys provided the asphalt. But he did it fast. Yes, they did. They got the, uh, they, the one part where the young girl tripped, they did fast. Uh, mm -hmm. When I when I felt like, uh, when I saw the young girl fall on her way to school, I'm assuming on her way to school, yeah. uh, I called Mo as soon as I got back home, and uh, he said he would send somebody over within a half an hour. Somebody's over looking at it. Yeah. I was very yeah. impressed because I was concerned it was that bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so a lot of other people said they were concerned too, but they didn't know how to call. So they're kind of glad in a way that the little girl tripped because that got. And I happened to be there with just well, her beautifully. I, I think he was working on it to begin with. It, it, the problem is that railroad line is owned by uh, Mass Department of Transportation. That's what you said. Uh, it was purchased, uh, I understand, at the behest of the Kraft family. Um, but uh, I looked as a mass transit plan, a rail uh, freight plan that was just been updated and uh, so I look to see what the future of the outline was because I don't think we're going to get a lot of passenger service through there because you know I guess who wants to go from Framingham to Mansfield <laughs> 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 um, it, it, and if you do you'll drive and so you won't take a wait for the train for two hours but um, Th that will be from Walpole South. That's where they will get it. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised with Mr. Kraft owning all that land that he bought up for the uh, 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 the casino that failed oh. to pass. That he won't come up with something because he's been pushing for mass transit service in and out of Boston. So mm -hmm. if he gets that, uh, there's such a demand for housing in Boston that uh, he could easily build yeah. a lot of apartments or condos or whatever around on all that land. Um, I noticed now when you get down to Walpole, uh, you need to go under the railroad trestle mm -hmm. uh, at uh, 27 there, just outside of Walpole Center. They've torn that whole block down and they're gonna put, I think, retail on the first floor yeah, of the condos I saw or that. apartments or something. So, And I'm sure they'll sell like hotcakes Probably. or rent like hotcakes, whatever they are because it, you can walk to the train station mm -hmm. and then you can walk to Walpole Center. And, so. it, ha and it has a, ni Walpole has a nice center. Yes. Yeah. It really does. Almost as nice as Medfield, so. <laughs> I like Medfield, I have to admit. <laughs> I, you know, Medfield's got a viable center, I think last five years it's really come a long way. You don't hear anyone call it Deadfield anymore. No, but even when we moved here, that was the downtown that really was attractive to me. Yeah. Because I yeah. always liked to walk and it was nice to be able to walk and well, see. And you like it because it has a library in the center. I, I am kind of a library, I'm a library holic, I guess yes, is what you call yes, it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. What, do, what do they call those people that follow the rock stars around? They're not junkies, they're, uh, oh, they have a term uh, for them. I, don't know, but I think I probably spent more time in town hall than I ever did in the library when you think about you it. You probably all. did, yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, but more pleasant time in the library, I'm sure. <laughs> I enjoyed the uh, library. Yeah, they do a nice job. They so. do, and I'm glad I, I was on the committee when we built the new library. Yes, and now they're looking for a new director, too. Yeah, there. So I've heard we've, it. We've had uh, 
a lot of changes, a new fire chief, a new uh, library director, a new, new public works director, uh, new facilities manager, and they've all worked out really well. I think there and maybe some new uh, people at town hall include, are you, are you deciding what, what you're going to do with your I'm future? I'm deciding, yes, I'll be 72 in March, so I have to figure out what to do. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay in the job? Uh, well, uh, um, for now. <laughs> As of now. So, uh, I'll uh, figure that out. I say every every Monday. I say, oh, uh, I'm going to get out of here. This is too tough. And every Friday, I say, well, it's not so bad. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, but it's sooner rather than later. That's for sure. You know, the people in town are town hall yes, are marvelous. I, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to go out with my boots on. That's for <laughs> sure. So. And I'd like a few years to uh, enjoy life besides working 16-hour days. That's so maybe the selectmen will, will not reappoint you. How's that? That would be wonderful. <laughs> so, as I always used to say to you, I also, when you said you uh, voted to fire me, I would always <laughs> try to second the motion. You say, so, please. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. Um, the sele selectmen have been doing a good job, I think. I listen. I don't go to the meetings because I don't want to be yes. intrusive, but I do watch them on television. Well, they tell me that they are... Uh, Soon they will have uh, the meetings back televised live. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. Okay. Uh, but uh, I hope they do because a lot of people do w like watching it. And, I do. And I've talked to several people who said it's not the same when you don't see it live and you watch it three days later. You know, mm. it's, uh, I don't know. I don't watch it because I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch the stupid things I say <laughs> at meetings, so I don't. I don't turn it on, and so, or if it, I happen to turn it on accidentally, I flip channels and watch something <laughs> better. So. No, I like watching Medfield TV, not just because I volunteer here, but because I like I like the shows they have. I like a lot they of just those ran shows. one uh, with yes. Mark Fisher. Um, I got yes, a lot of yes. pl pl pleasant comments about uh, talking about his nine years as a selectman. And not only was he a selectman yeah. here for nine years, but he grew up here and he was an 11th generation of Clarks that grew in, that started Medfield. So it's, he has so many deep ties. He's Medfield history and one, one man. Right. And, it's, and it's just wonderful that he was willing to be a selectman and he did a good job. Yes, yes. And then his, dad, his mother was on uh, also with him at one of the shows when you interviewed Yeah, I interviewed the, the Clark family. The, the, three of them, yeah. There were three so of them that, that I fun. interviewed. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I think it's wonderful to be able to say one person, one family was in town that long. Yes, yeah, yeah. For almost 400 years, it's amazing. Um, sort of like the British royal family, I <laughs> guess. Huh? So. No, but it was fun to have somebody talk. I interviewed Richard Sorka, too, and that yeah. ran again uh, about his, his yes. term. He was, uh, wasn't on his, anything like as long as Mark. And, but I heard, it, and I heard you doing Ralph uh, Parmesan. I so inter in interviewed him today, yeah. 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 Interviewed him, yeah. Um, by the way, I think we're, we found the, uh, we'll be having a resolution uh, with the Veterans Services agent. So oh, really? I think we're, we've been talking to another town in the area, and I think we'll be able to come up with something. I hope it works. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, uh, uh, you know, like Ron is going to Florida now, so uh, yeah. he's really been filling in in the interim, but uh, he can't fill in very well from Florida. So. No, no, you can't. No, we can't, but it's, the veterans are such a big part. I grew up in World War II, so I remember yes. having such reverence and, and oh, feeling yes. honored to even meet one of the people that had fought, actually fought in the war. Yeah, and unfortunately, I was sort of in the middle of the Vietnam era when veterans were not treated very well. And I think, uh, fortunately, the attitudes t have changed dramatically. And people appreciate uh, what the oh. veterans have done for us over the years. And, and I, it seems to me that we are getting somewhat bigger crowds at the uh, Memorial Day events, and you know it's not huge because a lot of people go away. But I think a lot you see a lot of people with young children there, and I think it's it's nice. And I often get friends and go over to the Legion for lunch. They have absolutely wonderful lunches. If none of you have ever been to lunch at the Legion, dynamite sandwiches made by George Hinckley. Uh, <laughs> the prices are normal. It's a very reasonable price. Uh, there's an open bar where you can get, uh, you know, Coke, milk, whatever you want, beer, whatever, whatever you happen to choose. And I went today with, with a friend and it was really, really nice to see other people there. And the Legion needs the money. 
Yes. So they serve from I, usually from 11.30 to 1.30, five days a week. They have the variety of sandwiches. And then on weekends, on Saturdays, I think they have just hot dogs on Saturday. But it's, it's uh, a good thing to do and get a look at the Legion and yeah. give them a little help. Well, as long as you don't drink wine before 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I, I always say that about people and they get going. That said, just don't drink wine. Uh, don't drink before 10 a.m. So I just listened to a book about Edward Allard Poe, who I've always been fascinated by his stories. Oh, oh my God, The yeah. Pit and the Pendulum was one of my favorite. The Castle of Amontillado. Yeah, yeah. But I listened uh, to this book. I can't read anymore with my eyes. So, and it said he was often drunk in the morning before he got out of bed. Yeah, maybe that and I knew he had a drunk problem too. But I didn't. And I knew the yeah. liquor was bad. But I didn't know it was as bad as. Yeah, they had a. Uh, a uh, documentary on PBS about him. It oh, was so I missed that. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. He, he did some of his uh, best work in Boston. He so. lived in Boston, then Philadelphia, New York, and Baltimore. Yeah. He went right down the coast, up yeah. and down the coast. Although I think he originally was from Baltimore, but mm -hmm. I think he had a very. But he spent a long time in Philadelphia. I was, it was wonderful to yeah. hear how he'd moved around. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, uh, in <coughs> interesting to see what. You know, we think the Revolutionary War and the Civil War were so far back, but um, I was talking to my great nieces and great nephews and telling them, you know, my grandparents were born uh, during the Civil War. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yours probably my, were too. My, my grandparents were too, yeah. Yeah. So, 1860s. You yeah. know, we think it's uh, way, 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 way back. And it's really only a matter of five or six generations. Yeah. So, um, and then the Revolutionary War, you know, of course, that, that goes back quite a bit more, but it's really, what, 300 years? Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, I hope our town is still here with before the next war that I hope never happens. <laughs> yes. I would be absolutely yeah. thrilled if there are no more wars. I don't think I'm going to happen, but. I think it would be uh, weapons and. Uh, uh, devices they have today, uh, it, uh, we can't afford to go to war. I mean, it's too destructive. The, mm. uh, you know, we talk about Agent Orange and mustard gas. Mm. Uh, the things we have today pale by you know, make them pale by comparison. So I, I really, I, I think if we have another war, it will probably be our last. So I hope so. Well, I hope we don't have it. I hope we don't have to find out. I so. just want want the town and the people to stay safe. I want the town to still be a good place to live, to to raise your kids, to go to school, to enjoy life, to retire to. I just that's all I want, and it's I don't know whether it's feasible, but that's, that's all we're work, we're working for it. Yeah, that's right. Very simple, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no debt. How's that? Add that one to no debt. <laughs> Hey, there we go. You can uh, you can become the ruler of the world with well, a, with a yeah. platform like that. If only you could implement it. But so. I want Medfield to remain to remain a Medfield, a nice, nice small town. Yeah, yeah, it is a nice town. And, you know, it's always impressive, like with the acting fire chief that's in, how impressed he was by mm -hmm. the town. Good. And, and uh, I'm sure when you're in real estate, you would, people would comment on the beauty of the town. Mm -hmm. It was the downtown, often was the drawing card. It was amazing. Yes, yeah. Um, and the open spaces that we have, uh, I think we're, we're lucky. I always say to people when they complain about a building project or something, I'll say, well, you can't, don't cry over the losses, you know, uh, revel over the, the uh, victories. And we've know, seen some we good things. A lot of victories, yeah. We have seen some really I mean, good things. How many things. towns can say they've got 45% or 49% of the land area dedicated to protected open space? Yeah. I mean, that's uh, obscene. It's huge. You know, it's just unheard of almost. So, but All we have to do is get rid of the traffic on 109. That will be a that would be a huge plus if we well, could find we'll, a way to do it. We'll just put it all underground and we'll have a tunnel under the Charles <laughs> River. And and we'll just raise another couple of billion dollars <laughs> to pay for it. So. What's a little more debt, right? <laughs> yes, yes. We'll bill it to the feds in the state. So. Uh, and we can line it all with Tresca concrete. <laughs> that's, r that's true. <laughs> that is true. Well, I guess we've probably uh, solved all the world problems today. So we're uh, winding down 2017. We are. It, it's amazing how quickly they went by. And I think... Uh, uh, with all the bad things that happened in the world, that's probably a good year to 
put behind us. I hope so. so and I hope 2018 is a better year. I hope so. For our yes. town, state, and, yes. the, and of course the federal government as well. Yeah. yeah. And I hope so. I, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, it, it's hard to project what's going to happen in the years ahead, but it seems like you know, we, our generation was going to be the one that was going to correct all the ills of the world, and if nothing, we probably made them worse. We tried, though. <laughs> yes, yeah. So now we'll just have to see what uh, Apple 12 will do or, or uh, <laughs> Amazon and you know, all these other things where you don't have to shop. Uh, no. Where they say they expect 30% of the malls in the United States to be closed I've within that, the next yeah. two or three years. And you can see it with all the online shops. Sure. So it's easier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then what will happen to the tax base? You know, because people yep. don't want their taxes raised. They don't want sales tax on their online purchases. And what, what will happen to all the but people they, who are employed in the stores? Think of that. All well, the people employed that's in the stores. Huge, that's a huge and, thing. And then I say, well, if you don't collect sales tax, if your sales tax revenue is going down, if you want to cut the income tax, how are you going to educate your kids? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get the money to do that? And, you know, they say, oh, eliminate corruption and crime. And I say, well, okay. And what are you going to do with all the empty store buildings? Yes. I mean, it's a very complicated thing with this online shopping. It really is. Yes, it is very much so. And, uh, and I think this whole computer thing, too, uh, I heard the other day that there's some organization that is about to declare um, computer addiction is a mental health problem. Oh, I, I, uh, that people I can't see that. control their uh, usage of computers and cell phones and whatnot, and it's uh, become really uh, um, a big problem mm -hmm. mental health-wise. Yeah. So, so. Well, maybe you'll figure it all out by the time we do this in the beginning in, in yeah, January. We'll have a whole month. <laughs> So, no problem, no sweat. So, so these, so the people at home, this, these problems and these worries all be gone, right? In yes. another month, we'll right. see what. In another year, we'll have next year. <laughs> That's you right. Know. It will be a new year, a new yeah. month. Uh, it will be. But I thank, yeah. thanks, Mike, for coming every month. It's great to have well, you here. Well, it's always fun. It's always, and I thank. It's always fun to solve world problems. <laughs> right. It's much easier to solve than the town problems. <laughs> and I thank those of you at home for watching Medfield TV. Without, without the listening listeners and the watchers, we wouldn't be here. So thanks for watching Medfield TV, and I hope you keep tuned. Thank you.